What's going on everyone? Welcome to How to Build and Use. I know people have been making a meme joke calling him Wet Ham, but I think the actual pronunciation is Wet, wet Thumb. I actually have a friend's friend named, like, same spelling. We call him Wet Thumb. So I'll call him Wet Thumb, otherwise it feels really weird, okay? Okay, Wetham is in Mythical, Protagonist, and Dark Reincarnation. All three factions are very strong in both PvE and PvP. He's a very, very strong character in both um, PvE and PvP. He's a must-get, so if you have him, congratulations. If you haven't, you still have a lot of days to summon him. Now, let's compare both uh, classes here. We have Wing General, which is a Flyer class. Less HP than Demon class, less defense, but more magic defense and other stats are the same. Armful of Chaos, this is a Demon class. Demon class usually is stronger in all the stats. The only weakness would be Holy. Okay, so the Flyer class, you can fly and uh, 5 movement. And then the Demon class, 3 movement and obviously you can't fly. When it comes down to this, it's really preference, but when it comes to PvP, I would recommend the Flyer class it's just so that you have more mobility and less. Um, there's so many demon, not demon, holy units out there that just can easily counter you and one shot you. The Flyer class allows you to equip last right, which increases your survivability rate like much higher. Especially with his talent and 3C, I think Flyer makes him a little bit better. Okay, now we'll look at the talent here Climatic Bond. When entering battle, attack, defense, damage dealt, plus 5, 8, 11, and 15% at 6 stars. This part is kinda similar to the regular Matthew. After taking action, all debuffs on self are reduced an additional turn. Which means he has self cleanse every single turn. He also has 2 skills that allows him to move again. That would be 2 cleanse in 1 turn. When an enemy dies, so this includes the summoning unit when it comes to um, Apex. Cause 1, 2, 2, 3 at 6 stars, random enemies to gain despair. Passives disabled. What happens attacks cannot be guarded against. Last 2 turns. To simplify this, basically um, we'll use Apex as an example. Apex Arena, if your team kills your opponent, first or kills your opponent now the other team has three person randomly gain this pair and they cannot guard against Wetham and again Wetham can use he has a teleport if the opponent has less than 100% HP anywhere on the screen he can literally one shot because it cannot be guarded bonding requirement the first three is very straightforward the fourth one you need Bozel and the fifth one you need Sarita I would say both 4th and 5th bond is very important, so if you don't have Sarita nor Bozel, summon them when they're available. Okay, skills. Thank god he doesn't have a lot of like exclusive skills. So this makes making this guy much easier. So the first skill I'm going to talk about is Demon Dragons and Griefins. Cost 2, cooldown 5, range south, span 2. Physical damage attacks enemies within 2 blocks of self for 0.33 times AoE damage. Also inflict cannot be healed and cannot guard. Last 2 turns. After use may move 3 blocks. A high damage with debuff AoE. However you can dispel the um, debuffs. The cooldown is also very high. I don't think this is a good skill to use in PvE but PvP if you're doing AoE rush. I think it's a very strong skill, especially with the cannot be healed and cannot guard debuff. Next we have Shadow Step, cost 1, cooldown 4, range all, span single. So this was the teleport skill that I was talking about. So active skill, after use, transfer self next to an enemy with less than 100% HP. So if anyone who's not 100% HP, you can teleport next to them. If there is a Shadow of El Hazard, that's his 3C, within 3 blocks or an enemy with his pair, within 1 block may act again. 
when using this skill, buffs on this unit will not decrease in duration. Annihilation, cost 2, cooldown 5, range 1, span single. This skill is actually broken. Physical damage, attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.8 times damage, that's a lot. Before battle, dispel 5 buffs from the enemy, inflict 50% curse of wounding for 2 turns, cannot be dispelled. Uh, I would consider this a stronger version of Sword Soul. Because Sword Soul also dispel 5 buffs, same attack damage, but that's a healing block, but this one is healing reverse. So I think healing reverse is way stronger. You can't even heal, because if you heal, you'll deal damage. Awakening skill, Shadow of Alhazard. Cost 3, cooldown 7, range 2, span 3. I don't even know if there's any skills that's cooldown 7. So that's extremely long. Basically, they only allow you to use it once in the game. While PvE may be twice or three times at most. There's a few parts to this awakening skill. So we'll talk about the first part, the passive part. When battling against holy units, heroes attack, defense, magic defense plus 15%. So this includes both classes, the flyer class and the demon class. However, if this hero is a demon class, this effect is instead plus 60% of all three aspects, attack, defense, and magic defense. So against holy units, instead of having a disadvantage, you now probably have the similar or same stats, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he is not being, like he doesn't have a disadvantage against holy units. There is still a lot of holy units with holy skills that will still one-shot you. This passive skill just allows him to potentially one-shot a holy unit when other demon cannot do that. Physical damage attacks enemies within three blocks of the selected square for 0.15 times AOE damage and summons Shadow of El Hazard. This unit also gains attack plus 20% and immunity last two turns. After use, may move 3 blocks and attack. So Wetham will summon Sword of El Hazard, which is a sword that you can place on the map. So it's very important where you want to place it, because where you place it, it needs to be close enough for Wetham to get the effect, which I'll explain in the next page. Okay, so this is Shadow of El Hazard, this is the sword. So Shadow of El Hazard, Demon class inherits 75% of the summoner's max HP, cannot move, attack or be displaced. Immune to all debuffs has the following skills. Demon Source Protection. It's a command. For every enemy within 3 blocks, the summoner gains damage taking minus 15% up to 45%. Shadow Domination. It's also a command. All Dark Reincarnation allies on the map gain plus 5% to all stats except HP. Tainted Blood Regeneration. A passive skill. After taking action, restore 30% HP to the summoner. So the sword pretty much gives three buffs to Wetham. Um, the command, the first one, Demon Swords Protection, needs to be three blocks no further than Wetham in order to get the uh, damage taken minus 15% up to 45%. The more the enemy, the more damage taken reduced. So you need at least 3 to get the max damage taken reduced by 45%. The Shadow Domination is Dark Fashion Allies only will get that plus 5% stats except HP. And then the last one, after taking action, restores 30% HP to the Summoner. Which means if your Wetham is low in HP, you want to act the sword first before Wetham. I'll show you guys visually. All right, everyone, we're going to do some testing. So one of the thing I want to test is can you throw two swords? Even even though it's um, not really practical since it's seven, down, uh, seven turn cooldown. But if you have clock and chan, it's possible to do it in PvP. But in PvP without clock and chan, I, I think it's not really, like I said, not really practical. But anyway, I just want to find out what happens if you throw two swords down. So the first thing we're going to... I'm going to show you guys, it's not a testing, to show you guys that how you use him for both PvE and PvP. So when you throw down a sword, this is where you will place your sword and it will be there permanently. Okay, so this sword is a summon, which means you cannot stab it on top of them. 
it's not like Rosalia's sword. It's different. So again, it's a summon. It's just that it doesn't move and it's a sword form. So three of these, well, I explained earlier, so I'm not going to talk about that. So right now, three range, which means I do get that minus 15% damage taken reduced instead of 45. And usually if that happens, you attack someone, get some HP off of them. So they're not at 100% HP. And this is where you want to use this. So when you use your summon, if you are not three range of the sword, you cannot act again. Like that. You just summon and you don't act again. Okay, so this time I'm going to summon the sword closer. And I'll show you guys that this way, if you're close enough, you can act again with your teleport. Like that. And one more thing I want to show you guys is, you know, let me attack. Okay, so I attacked, and as you can see, the werewolves are not at 100% HP. So if there's a situation where you get to move both of them at the same time, so your order would, you want to use the sword first. I end my sword action that I can heal, and then you attack with, with them. So if there's a chance, if there's a situation you can heal first, heal first before you attack because the command on the source they won't disappear as long as you're close enough so it doesn't matter which order you act first okay so i tested it you can throw two swords down but of course you cannot get the extra stats here but you can heal twice in one turn and your range becomes much wider instead of just three range now you kind of be like if you throw it other place you kind of make it like everywhere if that makes sense okay so you can see there's two swords out but you still only get one stat however um i can heal once and heal twice that's it and again it's not um i don't think it's practical and i think it's kind of useless to throwing two to throw two swords but who knows maybe it's good because since it's summon you can block your opponent maybe if you throw two swords you can trap them but i'm pretty sure the sword will die in one hit we'll first talk about the flyer build recommended weapon renarok by far the best weapon in the game when it comes to single target Scarlet Reaper is more for if you're using his AOE. If you want to do AOE rush, I think Scarlet Reaper is better for him. And if you don't have any of the above weapons, Throng Guardian is probably your next best weapon. Okay, recommended armor for Flyer. Last right, hands down the best. Especially with his um, 3C, the sword, his damage taken can be up to minus 85%. But if you don't have Last Rite, I think the next one would be Unstoppable Knight. That one is kind of like Last Rite. And if you don't have that as well, Azure Legend is probably your next best in slot. Okay, recommended helmet. All preference, okay. But when it comes to Flyer, I think these three are possibly the best based on his kit. Um, King's Crown, if you feel like you're going to do a lot of tank push and going to be close to your allies. Flower Boon, also called the Ribbon. If you are going to go Lone Ranger, you're just going to go in. With 3C, the sword, you will have a lot of HP restored. And if you just want to go in and kill stuff to secure a kill, especially with a follow-up and Apex, you want to use Doomsday Herald if you're not using the AoE. So the scenario would be like you go in um, and then you attack someone because you can act twice. You go in, attack someone, hoping that this inflict cannot be healed on an enemy and then you attack someone else and then your team can follow up honestly even if you're using the aoe i think it's still a very good helmet to use as with them okay i'll talk about the accessories later since both class pretty much share the same accessories 
So recommended weapon, I would say Balance Blade if you're going for AoE. Unstoppable Knight is really good unless you decided to um, equip the Twilight Star, which I do not recommend on this character. Unstoppable Knight is really good and fits his kit perfectly, especially with 3C and Talent. Because this is basically the, um, the bonus stats on Unstoppable Knight. It's the same as the Talon and the 3C, but with less stats. Demon Slayer is kind of in between of both of the swords above. Um, it's good for AoE, it's also good for single target, but you're using him a little bit more for a debuff and dispel. Okay, recommended armor, very straightforward. Basically any heavy armor works. I think Forbidden is the best if you don't have that. Depends if you think you're gonna get hit a lot by um, range attack, then you use Aeolus. If you get hit a lot by melee attack, then the Bloodline Magic Armor. Recommended helmet. Honestly, any helmet will work, but uh, first one I would recommend would be Fury of Tear, just mainly because he can act again. And one of the act again is the teleport, which you deal no damage. So this allows you to gain extra skill damage and counter damage. Okay, next I'm going to recommend would be Vampire Mask, since he can act again. So you have a chance to reduce enemy's defense by 20% before you attack. And then last but not least, um, I think if you don't have any of the above helmet, you can always use Anus Helmet. I think it's always a very solid choice for any units. Okay, recommend accessories. Honestly, it's all preference. As long as it's plus attack percent, I think it's good enough. Say if you feel like you're gonna face a lot of holy units, then you use Judge Talisman. If you have to face against Helena, maybe you wanna use the prisoner accessory. And for flyer, you just use Slayer Emblem. You don't need a specific counter and hoping that he gets a little bit more tankier than you use Wing Shin Guards. And last but not least, if you face a lot of debuffers, then Overlord's Badge. The Overlord Badge is actually really good on him, just so that because a lot of stuff he's immune to. So whatever he gets debuffed on, he can dispel it by himself with his self-cleanse. Okay, enchant choices. Honestly, I recommend only these two. I know people will probably consider Full Moon, but he hits hard enough already. Full Moon, um, sure is good, but you're kind of limited yourself to only PvE. When it comes to Breeze and Clock, I think it's viable for both PvE and PvP. Random Breeze prong allows you to go in on your opponent in PvE and PvP. Like much easier to um, approach, to initiate. And then Clock for your AoE spam or your 3C spam. Since they both have extremely long cooldown, Clock is one of the best solution to it. Enchant stats, gear, enchant, pretty straightforward. Prioritize attack. And then if your accessory can get crit, that's best. You want to get as much damage output as possible. For the mastery stone, I would go for um, always weapon HP and then defense. And then for weapon and accessory, it's debatable. If you want more crit, then you choose skill. And then last but not least would be the arena PvP stones. Attack, HP, defense, I think it's like the standard for physical DPS. And then you want crit, or you can even put in magic defense because he does get extra magic defense stats with his 3C and talent. Werewolf, hands down the best troops for him. Only reason you don't want to use him is probably against holy units or against mages. Hellhound is also a very good choice because you can 3C and then apply Hellhound's debuff and then you act again. And then there's also Gargoyle and Barbarian Warrior. They are also really good troops and also preference, so I won't elaborate too much on those. Okay everyone, this is the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do consider. And if you like what you're watching, don't forget to like and share this video. And if you want to give further support, you can either buy me a coffee in the link description below or join as a member on YouTube and you will get a customized emoji and you have a badge next to your name when you comment. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.